It's 2023, and have you played Stalker Gamma Anomaly yet? What even is Stalker Gamma Anomaly? How do I progress or make money in Stalker Gamma Anomaly? I will answer all these questions and more in today's video for new players and people starting their journeys in this amazing mod pack for a free standalone mod that you should be playing and trying out. The new update that came out recently for Stalker Gamma Anomaly has been massive. New animations, new artwork, new icons, very crisp, clean features, new weapons, the list goes on and on. But it could be very overwhelming for new players to the series. I'm going to give you some tips on where to start, what to do. The first tip, new players should start off with the Loner Faction. The Loner Faction gives you the most story missions in the game, the main missions that you could progress through. Stalker Gamma Anomaly is a sandbox game, but a few of the main factions have a main storyline. Those factions are the Mercenaries, Duty, Freedom, and Clear Sky. I don't recommend starting out as any other factions but these four, with Loners being first, Clear Sky being next, Freedom after that, then Duty, and then Mercenaries last, because Mercenaries tend to be the hardest of the bunch for new players. It starts you off in a more advanced region, more endgame zone, that could be very overwhelming. There are three secret factions in the game, and if you watch this video all the way through at the end, I'll tell you the codes to unlock them if you want to play around with them. But if you play through the main story mission to the very end and all the other campaigns that they give you, you will unlock these three factions by yourself. You will not need the codes. The next tip is for starting gear, what to pick. This is all really personal preference and what kind of weapons you like using, but in my opinion, you should be getting a long range weapon and a short range weapon, if you can. Some basic armor, some meds, and an artifact case. Here is what I usually pick as a loner. The SKS, and a 45 caliber pistol. The shotgun is also a great option, but be aware that the shotgun is only a double barrel and I would not recommend taking the 45 caliber with seven shots as your backup. You'll be scrambling to reload as mutants are ripping you apart. It's good now to get a good start on your meds. Don't worry about food and drink too much. They are not that hard to find and you'll be cooking your own mutant meat very soon. Tip number three is make a stash location in your main hub area. Stalker Gamma Anomaly lets you spawn in other areas besides the starting region of Cordon. But whatever area you choose, whether the swamps or Cordon, I recommend Cordon, buy a cheap backpack and make a stash. Once you have the stash made, this is gonna be your base of operations. You're going to keep weapons you want to upgrade here, armor you want to fix, any extra tools or items. This is where you're going to dump everything. And this is important because you can also use these stashes as fast travel locations. If you're doing a more serious playthrough, like some of your favorite Twitch streamers who are amazing at this game. Damn boy, he's thick! Boy, that's a thick ass boy! Damn! then you might not want to fast travel. But I have a life outside of gaming. I don't want to play this game for the next year, not to make any progress because I'm running across the entire zone on foot. So I do use fast traveling sometimes. The great thing is there is an in-game fast travel system between major hubs that you talk to an NPC and pay them, and they will take you to the location you pay them to take you. This is definitely more lore friendly and the consequence of spending money balances it out. This is the fast travel system I use, but I will not look down upon you if you use the stash fast travel. Tip number four is do missions early on and keep grinding stash locations. Every mission you complete, you will find a new stash location that is randomly generated on the map. And in these stash locations, have the opportunity to find important things like tool sets 
great weapons and armor and things that you need. The farther north these stashes are found, the better loot that's inside them. And green stashes almost have a guarantee of having a tool set inside of them. We'll talk more about tool kits in a little bit. But the whole point of these missions and finding weapons is to start breaking down weapons and armor to find the parts you need. Keep every part that's above 50%, some say 60% because it makes it easier, of condition of the item. As you're breaking down weapons and armor, start saving all the components that are above 50 to 60% in condition. Some people say 60, I say 50%. At 60%, you have a real easy task of repairing these items with other items. 50% it gets a little bit tougher, but anything under 50% will be very difficult for you to repair at this stage in the game. Tip number five is buy these tools right away. The first tools you need are a multi-tool. This will be used to break down items into their components. You want a file this is used to repair your multi-tool so you don't have to keep buying them. And a cooking stove would be very helpful for you to start cooking yourself. Even unpurified mutant food is better than starving to death. And the radiation really isn't that bad. You could just drink some water afterwards. The last thing you want to make sure you buy is the hunter's kit and a better knife. The hunter's kit is better than your standard backpack because you get more trophies from mutants and monsters, and then that means more money to you if you can harvest more stuff from the monsters. This will be invaluable to you, and also down the road when you get a more advanced backpack, you could just keep the hunter's kit in your backpack. You don't have to wear it, and you'll still get the bonuses. A better knife lets you butcher these creatures better. Some advanced mutants you can't even harvest unless you have a better knife. Tip number six is your first money-making racket. This will be selling all the mutant parts to Hunter in Junkyard, the merchant that lives in the middle of Junkyard in the big warehouse. He buys mutant parts and body parts of animals for way more money than any other merchant in the game. Tip number seven is toolkits are essential to Stalker Gamma Anomaly. You want these toolkits so you can have access to a free workbench at any time. You don't have to pay people to use their workbench. These toolkits are also used for quick and easy repairs. The toolkit system is interesting and almost a tier system, where the lesser basic toolkits are used for the early game items, advanced toolkits are like mid game items, and then you have the army toolkits and even better toolkits for the end game rifles and end game armors. All you have to do is look at the item, examine it, and you'll see all the details you need on how to repair the item you're looking at. Sometimes it's little tiny tools that could help repair it. Sometimes it is more advanced tools or components, but most of the time you can repair a weapon easily with its adjacent toolkit. For example, your early starter kit items will usually be repaired with the basic toolkit or the historic toolkit. The historic one is a little harder to come by. And you'll use the basic toolkit to make the weapon repair kits. I use these terms kind of in conjunction, but it all starts with the toolkits. The basic one is where you need to get, you get them from stashes. Green stashes you go to every time you get one. You want to gauge the weapon of your dreams and your personal preference. Every weapon in Stalker Gamma is viable. Tip number eight is you want to run between areas and keep cycling missions and quests. If all your quests run out in Cordon being a loner, go west to the swamp, work for Clear Sky, get all the missions done there, and then go north to Yantar. These three areas, including Junkyard, the majority of the southern region where you're going to be making a bank. And you can establish stashes in each of these cities and fast travel between them. That is your prerogative. Tip number nine is the scientist in Yantar buy artifacts for more money than anyone else in the game and also meds. If you base yourself there even temporarily, 
You can go to every single artifact spot and anomaly spot in the entire region, gather all the artifacts up and sell them to the scientist for major money. This is a great way to make money in the beginning besides hunting animals. I would definitely do this and you can rotate through these gameplay loops in the beginning to keep the game fresh and fun. Go between Hunter selling mutant parts, Yantar and the scientist selling artifacts, and go down to Sidorovich and Corden just to mock him and let him know you're not selling him crap. Tip number 10 is you want to keep an eye out for seven bottles of Nemiroth vodka. If you bring them to Chef and Yantar, you'll get a free barrel armor. Never trade your toolkits to any of these people that ask you for toolkits unless you have spares. And when I say spares, that is plural. You want like three spares before you start trading off toolkits. Because I've made the mistake of giving away my only toolkit before. It's not fun. Also, PDAs you acquire off enemies. You want to read them for free clues on where items are and hidden things. Also, it gives you outright stash locations. Never sell these PDAs to Sidorovich or anybody. The money you make from them is not that much. And if you disassemble these PDAs, you will get amazing parts that are worth a lot of money and that you'll use for upgrades and building new items with the toolkits. Make sure you never disassemble your personal PDA. Keep track of it. You will mix it up and lose it amongst other PDAs. Don't be like me and destroy it or get rid of it. And the final tip before you leave early game and get into mid game is after the southern regions move to the army warehouses or Rostock, become friends with duty or freedom. My opinion is become friends with the hippies at freedom in the army warehouses. The army warehouses are centrally located and also in a state of perpetual war between monolith, duty, freedom, and mercenaries. Because of this perpetual fighting zone, you will get a bunch of free gear, a bunch of awesome weapons, mid-game armors, and great stuff to scavenge. Also, Freedom has good merchants and traders that you can make money off of and buy cool stuff. Duty and Freedom are enemies, but if you balance out your missions and make sure you don't take too many assassination missions against the enemy faction of the faction you're working with, you can game the system and become friends with both freedom and duty, but you have to be tactful and clever. But if I had to choose one or the other, I would become friends with freedom and not enemies with duty, but remain neutral or better than neutral with duty. If you become enemies with duty, you have to circumnavigate Rostock, which is a major choke point in the game and map to get to other areas. And it's a pain in the ass to go around Rostock all the time because duty is trying to kill you every time you walk through. Another great bonus tip is the camouflage slash disguise system in the game. Always keep some spare armor of your enemies or factions that are enemies like military or whatever enemy factions you have, monolith, because even the most basic armor that's very damaged you can put on and get a disguise bonus that you can sneak through enemy territory and get stashes in enemy territory that you could not get before. Definitely save some armor for this. And that's about it. If you've made it this far by now, you should be in the mid game around army warehouses, Rostock, making a stash there and proceeding farther and farther into the zone for better items, better loot, tougher monsters, cool story missions, and also great sandbox experience. But before we leave, let me give you the secret codes to get the three secret factions, four actually, but you will unlock these if you beat the main story quests and all the other adjacent Gamma main story quests. The first one is at the faction select screen without clicking anything, or even clicking on the factions, just type in your keyboard ISG 
This unlocks the United Nations faction, basically. UNISG faction. If you type in Renegade, this will unlock the Renegade faction. And if you type in Grey, G-R-E-H, this unlocks the Sin faction. You can also just press the Z button, just the letter Z, and you will unlock the Zombified Stalker faction, which is one of the hardest playthroughs in the game. The Zombified faction is the hardest playthrough in the game because you can't trade, you can't do quests, you can't use technician or repair guns, you have no companions. This is ultimately just to play around or have an extremely hard playthrough. The Renegades are kind of like the bad faction that hangs around the swamps. And this faction should be tried out if you love survival. It throws you in the mix right away and you have to survive. Sin is an alternative to Monolith if you want to be a bad guy and have some challenging stuff. And they also have a little storyline. And UNISG is a different storyline altogether. And this is also something you play after beating the game. Guys, let me know what you think about this video. If it's helpful, if you've learned something, please hit that like button. It helps me out tremendously. And consider subscribing to the channel for awesome video game news, reviews, and all sorts of stuff that is pro-modder, pro-emulation, and pro-self-sustainable gamer. What does that mean? Check out my most recent Why I Play SP Tarkov video on why you need to be a self-sufficient gamer in the year 2023. Stalker Anomaly is the epitome of self-sufficient gaming, and I commend the modders that make it, and I commend Grok, the cultivator and curator of the Stalker Gamma mod pack that brings together all these amazing, over 376 mods together, and gets them all working for you so you could play this great iteration of Stalker Anomaly known as Stalker Gamma. Guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, check out more videos, and I'll catch you on the next one.